Well, howdy. It's been almost a week since I last played Civilization IV, with my session being on the 20th, and tonight is the night after Christmas. <laughs> These days more so than ever, I appreciate taking breaks uh, while I'm playing video games, uh, particularly uh, if they are video games I'm recording for the channel. I reflected on this during my Might and Magic 7 for Blood and Honor series, uh, that, uh, that the breaks that I was taking pretty much between, like, if not, like, every video, then every other video, uh, where it was just like a day or maybe two, allow me to refocus on what I want to do and consider the events of the session. There's just things that I'm not going to consider while engaging in live commentary or events that will transpire. I'll provide my immediate reaction, but I don't have my full brain power to channel into a situation. I've made mention of this through years. Uh, I play worse while I record live commentary than when I don't, because a portion of my brain power is devoted to communicating with you, the viewer. And I also have a vested interest in keeping a video moving. You know, I don't want to spend a lot of time microwing these cities, for example, uh, because I would feel compelled to do a bunch of video editing. And, well, I've never been one for video editing, to try and remove all this dead air time and be scrutinizing these cities. I'm not as good at this game as I used to be, so it takes me longer to make quality decisions. Okay, okay, we have 32 cities, but before I get talking into too much about our current situation, let's do an alternate history of what if. I'm going to load back to basically before the start of last episode. We had mostly success whenever I attacked Mansa Musa. I took a total of five cities on his continent, and my attack here was rebuffed. And I'm not in bad position to uh, assault the second city here. Now, of course, Mansa Musa is going to end up having a bit of naval supremacy on me. Not like that fucking matters, right? Now, you may have noticed the friendly text up there, courtesy of um, the Beyond the Sword Unaltered gameplay mod, that would tell you that Mansa Musa is actually willing to capitulate the moment that he will stop refusing to talk. So if I just give him a few turns. Mansa Musa, I can call him up. Hey, he'll capitulate to me. Sounds great. Do note that I still have that war wariness, though. But that war wariness will fade away. So long as I'm not at war. With Mansa Musa the owner of the statue of Zeus, uh, whose wonder, that wonder doubles, like, you know, the impact of war wariness. And so now that he is my vassal, we can engage in all manners of deals, I can get his little individual resources, you know, he's only cautious with me, but I could give him his cities back. Because really, he can use those continental cities better than I can. Why not just make my vassal even more powerful than what he was? Now he's friendly with me. Mansa Musa loves me. That's a plus seven for having liberated his damn cities. Good guy, Mansa Musa. Yeah! Everyone's happy. And I'll just click through a turn. We'll take a look at that stuff later, and just click a whatever. So as you can see, my cities are in better condition, happiness-wise. There is the hell no, we won't go. There's also a little bit of unhappiness from We Demand Emancipation. Do note that we have a plus one happiness modifier from We Influence Other Civilizations, because we are the master in a... We are the suzerain of, uh, of Mansa Musa, whereas he has a malice, a minus one. Uh, penalty due to uh, being my underling. Now, with the power of Mansa Musa over there, who loves me very much, we could engage in some wheeling and dealing here. 
my friend here deserves. Rifling in biology, that will make him stronger as my vassal. In exchange, I'd like to take things like communism and constitution. And while we're there, you can give me gold too. I don't want you to research physics. Why don't you go after something like steel instead? When I give food to the poor, they call me a saint. When I ask Most why man the poor have no And so, in this alternate reality, with my great friend Mansa Musa, I can direct him to research things while I research things, and we exchange those technologies with each other, and we easily outpace whatever anyone else here can do. You know, he's got his cities, like his coastal cities took a beating there. Uh, they suffered some losses. Uh, but he also got, like, free military units uh, in these cities. He got, like, two free musket men whenever I liberated these five cities. I didn't show that off last turn, but he definitely did. You can tell because you can see those units there that don't have any promotions on them at all. Whereas, like, all the other stuff that he's got sent around at least has something in the way of promotion. This preserves my military, allowing me to get it back on the galleons and go after someone who doesn't have rifles. Augustus has rifles. Hannibal will soon get rifles, but Toku and Churchill don't even have replaceable parts yet. And so that allows me to save my military. I go beat up someone else. I crush them. I vassalize them. And the party continues. This is not just how I've won maps on higher difficulties before, but it's how... Many people can win maps on higher difficulties. Like, you beat up an AI enough to make them capitulate to you. Uh, that basically makes them your ally that you can direct research for. Uh, you can have a reliable trading partner there. And the process continues. If you're unfamiliar with the... With how vassal states work, uh, there's a bit of description in-game concepts about it. Uh, there is peace vassaling, uh, which um, basically, like, say that Mansa Musa and I weren't fighting, but he liked me, and he was really weak and I was really strong. He might voluntarily agree to vassalize to me, uh, but that is an agreement that he could back out of at any time. Uh, I would get a plus one bonus to my happiness, like he would get a minus one penalty to his happiness, uh, and a few other benefits... But it's not that big of a deal. Capitulation is a far more serious, like, vassal agreement, where he's been forced through war to surrender to me. That pretty much binds him to me, and he can only break out of that vassal, like, vassal agreement in very specific circumstances. You'll notice here that, uh, like, next to, like, friendly towards me and then vassal of me, there's, like, a land thing, there's a population thing, and... Eh. Or, if I make a demand of him, uh, refusal means war, that could end up sparking a war between us. Now, it is worth noting that I do have to pay a bit of maintenance, uh, a bit of extra maintenance, on my own cities. That's not paying for Mansa Musa's maintenance, I just have to incur extra maintenance. And you also get credit for half the land and population of the vassal state. So that's a way for you to quickly go to domination. Preserves the military, you get back on the boats or whatever the situation may arise, and you keep rolling. However, that's not what happened. For starters, I wanted to kill Mansa Musa. That was my goal. And so by wanting to kill Mansa Musa, <laughs> I kind of had to go on the island there and kill him. No matter how crippling that was for my cities. Cities that I probably should have said to be on production focus instead of food. Because they were so furious that they were starving themselves. Because they weren't working their own damn tiles. And to countermand that, I could have told my automated workers to leave old improvements. So that they would not have immediately responded to a situation by going, Oh my god, I gotta fix it! <laughs> right. So, there's that situation. I also don't enjoy the facile state mechanics. Uh, folks who have watched a number of my Civ 4 series on this channel will know that I've, I have regularly turn them off. I didn't turn them off, uh, although I could have set up a custom NC-191, because this was just NC-191, I have left them on. 
Uh, but I do regularly play with them off. I don't enjoy the vassal state mechanics. Uh, there's also circumstances where um, you could be fighting someone and they peacefully vassal to someone else, which drags that person into a war with you. So I, like, say, for example, if I'm fighting Mansa Musa and Mansa Musa agrees to peacefully vassal to Churchill and Churchill accepts. Churchill is now Mansa Musa's master and he's now at war with me, and I can no longer make a separate peace with Mansa Musa. I have to go through Churchill. Uh, in this particular situation, I don't think that would have happened. Like, even though in the English and Carthaginians don't particularly like me, I'm a, I'm a big dog when it comes to the military. <laughs> I don't remember all the mechanics and nuances of, like, when, like, when those, like, vassalizations will occur. Just to keep that in mind. So, reflecting on the fact that I wanted to do Total War versus Mansa Musa and take all the cities, could I have done this, like, how could I have done this better? Well, I could have put myself in better position to swoop in and take all of the coastal cities at once. I could have prepared a greater sized military, but do keep in mind, I did prepare a greater sized military. And out of concern for my coastal cities, initially, from like Mansa Musa and maybe Churchill, I moved some stuff over here. And then when Hannibal came over too, instead of fighting Tokugawa, I divested like more of my military over here. So I had fewer rifles than I had intended to. This culminated in me having less of a military, thus having it take longer. I also had to march considerable distance to take these two co non-coastal cities, which took a bit of time as well, and being camped next to an AI city immediately puts them into panic mode, where they will rapidly produce as many military units as they possibly can. Uh, there are dangers in you being camped right next to an AI city. Uh, and I was, for a considerable period of time, and I had to deal with more, like, rifles versus, like, longbowmen, like, we won that. It's on a hill, though. It was a little bit rough. Uh, and keep in mind the entire time, like, Mansa Musa was researching technology that wasn't immediately going to save him with, like, rifling. Mansa Musa was the tech leader of this map. He just wasn't the military tech leader. Now, if he had gotten rifles, I would have grabbed steel. I would have built some cannons, and I would have come over here, and he would have had no chance. The immense production advantage I had over Mansa Musa would admit that he had no chance. But it just would have dragged the war on longer. Now, I could have... Let's let's go into the magical, like, ether of loading the game again, right? We'll click through a few turns. Like, I can make peace with him... That doesn't involve this capitulation. Um, if, say, I want to have a total war with him, uh, that gives me ten turns to relocate myself. Uh, it would allow the war wariness to tick down a little bit, but any remaining war wariness would still be there when I declared war on him again. Alternatively, I could just make a ceasefire with him. Ceasefire could be broken immediately. Basically. Resets positions of things, stuff gets kicked out of borders, stuff gets moved around. But basically that's like a, okay, I need a breather, I need to relocate shit around, and go back to war again. But also keep in mind that anyone who likes Mansa Musa will, uh, will dislike me a bit more, or should, I believe. Unless, like, a sane turn... I've never, like, immediately declared a ceasefire and then, like, declared war again on the same turn. Like, I assumed that the the Malice would have fired again. I guess the only person who really liked him was... Man. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, 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 whatever. That's interesting knowledge. Yeah. That was only a minus one. I actually didn't accru accrue, like, another penalty... 
for like declaring war on a friend. Interesting that. Irrelevant, but whatever. A uh, point being that I could have done that, uh, but that would have risked like while I'm at peace with Mansa Musa, he peacefully vassals to someone else, like Augustus Caesar. And Augustus isn't looking at that as, like, an affront to me. He's also not looking at it in regards to, like, military sort of scale. Although, do keep in mind, with rifling, uh, he is even with me at this point, regards to military strength. So, interesting tidbits all around. So, this war could have gone better, but this war was, in effect, for control of the game. Mansa Musa was the tech leader, and I have crushed the tech leader. He's out of the game. And his extra techs and what he did with them are equally out of the game. He has a number of great people settled across this damn island. And they are all mine to enjoy for the rest of time. Particularly in Timbuktu. Good stuff. And I basically have tech parity with everyone else. The closest threat to me is Augustus Caesar. Hannibal, I reckon, too. But that's okay. I need time to heal after the extensive war which severely weakened my cities, but I will have time to do so. The eye's not that great at naval invasions. I'm certainly better. I could muster up another attack force, uh, though I am considerably out of position to do that, and go target Churchill, who for whatever reason is behind on all the stuff. Um... Waiting-wise, I think I want to keep putting my points in Churchill and Hannibal. I don't care about Toku. And Augustus ain't putting any points into me. Augustus is a high-piece weight individual. Um, he doesn't declare war when he's pleased with you. He doesn't plot war when he's pleased with you. I don't think uh, Hannibal does either. Maybe Churchill doesn't too? Toku definitely can, though. But yeah, I'm in prime dominance here. Once my cities recover, and these cities come online that I've taken, um, we will spring to life, and it will be glorious. So, what do I want these cities to focus on? Keep in mind that uh, me telling the cities to do shit is going to factor into what they build, and then what the workers around will do. I want you guys to have food, I want you guys to do commerce as well, and give me research. And I want to select that all of my cities. Good. Now. I'm going after the corporation technology. You can see that uh, Augustus and Hannibal are researching it as well. Because I do need corporation in order for me to set up my corporation. The corporation that I want to build is Sid Sushi. It's what I came out here all the way to medicine for. But I ended up delaying grabbing corporation, actually. Now, Sid Sushi um, operates off of clams, crabs, clams, crabs, fish, or rice. And with the amount of resources I have in my, like, in my empire, that means that any city where Sid Sushi is will get plus 7 food and plus 27 culture. It's pretty nice. The two corporations I love in this game are Sid Sushi and Mining Inc. You can see the amount of raw production we'd get in this empire if I had a great engineer. But a great engineer is hard to pick up. Um without, like, really gearing yourself towards it. You can get a free great engineer all the way here at Fusion. <laughs> like, if you build the pyramids, uh, that gives you great engineer points, and you can silly, like, stack them in on Empire. We're gonna get, like, one in Hamburg in a few turns. Like, that's worth keeping in mind. And you can see, since I emphasized commerce, uh, those gold tiles are being worked. And I'm gonna try... You know, maybe we can get lucky and see a great engineer pop out instead of another merchant. Because if I got Mining Inc. too, this world is fucked. I mean, this world is already screwed anyway, but it would be super fucked. <laughs> I'm not really going to bother, like, controlling the production of these cities. Just 
I have a lot of cities, and I just don't want to focus, like, individual micro too much in this game. But what I do want to take a look at is what cities might be great at earning cash. The Daimyao um, is a shrine built with a great profit for the Taoist religion. It provides 15 gold. The Temple of Solomon is for the Jewish religions, providing 20 gold. The Kashi... Vish one off. I don't know. Uh, is the uh, the shrine for the Hindu religion, which is the apostolic palace religion, but it's only providing plus eleven gold. And I never built like a Buddhist shrine. So in all reality, if I want to maximize my gains from a corporation, I think I'm gonna set up Sid Sushi in Jen. The Jen. Which has the Temple of Solomon, which provides a lot of gold. So I'm actually going to take control of this city. I want to have this city. It's mine. You guys are going to do culture. And I want to make sure that you get a bank as soon as possible. I will beeline that. Over everything else, I want that. We need a certain number of banks in order to build Wall Street. That even like a legal thing that we can build right now. Where the hell is Wall Street? Is it incorporation? It's incorporation. Good. And because this map size is small, we'll need five banks. Now, what Wall Street does and why I care about it is if we go to National Wonders Wall Street, plus 100% gold earned. Yep. So this 20 turns into a 40. In addition, corporations earn money too at their headquarters, although they will cost money in individual cities as they get spread to them. Now keep in mind that economic civics will impact corporations as well. Free market reduces maintenance costs from corporations. State property kills corporations. They have no effect. Like, they're not dead, but they're just inert. Mercantilism disables foreign corporations, and environmentalism increases maintenance costs from corporations. So, I don't want to run state property. As nice as the plus, like, one food could be for workshops and water mills, I don't have a whole lot of those. And plus 10% hammers in all cities, I have a lot of those, that's pretty nice, but I don't want to stop corporations. Uh, environmentalism increases maintenance costs a bit, but I'm definitely going to be in that. Plus two commerce from all of my windmills. There's, there's a lot of hills on this map. I'm going to run and run that. Sitsushi and uh, Mining Inc. are the two most powerful corporations. Now, you might end up needing another corporation, like depending on like what you might go for, like or what particular resource you might be lacking. Like, if you don't have aluminum, which you'd really want if you're going to space, uh, maybe you have a lot of food resources instead of... instead of, like, seafood stuff. Maybe you're going, like, a cultural thing. You could use something like Civilized Jewelers or Creative Constructions, which is uh, the more powerful one. But, uh, Sid Sushi and Mining Inc. are where it's at, definitely. I've used these before in my games, and I've talked about them before in my games. Uh, and this is definitely a situation where I'd want to want to make use out of them. So considering where I'm going to want to set this merchant up, I'll uh, send a, a galleon over there. In my goodness, 24 minutes into this episode, I haven't begun to, like move around like military units and how I might try to reposition things or all the galleons I've got on the board whether I might delete them or prepare them for like another particular naval invasion who I might go after if that naval invasion occurred which would almost certainly be Churchill like Churchill still doesn't have rifles I could go over there and crush him but really we fought our war for dominance of this map and if I wanted to push it to, like, go for an actual domination victory, sure. But I'm okay. No big deal. 
I will relocate all of the galleons, though. Basically, just gonna leave those rifles on this map. Like, on this island. Like, this really isn't gonna be, like, a heavy, like, place for building military. And so they'll have the, the strength to fend off whatever naval invasion might be attempted. Like, I have 32 cities, Augustus has 15. And he won't declare war on me. Everyone else has garbage for map control. It will only get worse for the AIs from here. Like, if they are going to attack me, well, then I guess it should have already occurred. Do keep in mind that, let's say that I hadn't made any preparations. But I do have nationhood and I can draft shit. Churchill comes in, he gets this one city. It's an inconvenience, but I already control so many other cities on the continent. Like, I just draft up and move rifles, and I take it back, and I'll lose some population, some structures in the city, and all my cultural buildings are are guaranteed to be gone. It'll be irritating, and it'll, it'll like, give him some war score, we'll say, and make him think, ah, I'm not worried about peacing out. <laughs> but he wouldn't have kept that beachhead for long. Similarly, if, like, Hannibal had managed to poach Frankfurt or Munich, would not have been that big of a deal as well. I have so many cities, and because strong ones I have are interior, like, that's an advantage of having Berlin, like, off the coast. You can't immediately pop in and insult this, assault this. With the hills there on the coast, too, like, whatever. Like, that's pretty nicely secured. You've seen the danger of naval invasions. <laughs> Imagine if Timbuktu had been on the coast instead. You know, looking over here, like, London's down on the coast, but there are a few coastal cities as well. I could sweep in and poach six of those. That used to be a barbarian city. Seven, really. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven? Seven, yeah. And he's got three cities that aren't coastal. Where's that... Ah, oh, there it is. Oxford. Okay. Wasn't really focusing on that. So yeah, eight of his ten cities are coastal. And this one's definitely isolated from the rest. It just has like a, a ring here. Just very vulnerable. Even if he did get rifles. I just built cannons. Stack up. Get on the galleons. Go crush them. Easy as that. But I don't have to. I'll click through one turn here. We did it, everyone. Corporation. Noun. An engine that obsoleted the Great Lighthouse. Individual profit without individual responsibility. That, uh, that, that, that hurts me a little bit to have obsoleted that. It's a nice wonder, you know? Don't really even know what I want to build in this city. Just built that for now. Give me observatory. That's something else we need to take care of, too. Okay. I'm gonna put all cities here on citizen automation. And most of them on production automation. But there's a few cities I don't want to have production automation on. This one. This one. Basically, I'm going to keep, like, better track of... We'll say six cities. I'll keep track of. They're all of them else can go play following my speci specifications. Got a nice amount of beakers per turn. Although we did... Oh. Although we did lose an extra trade route in these cities from the Great Lighthouse. Well, from all coastal cities. All the non-coastal ones got an extra trade route. Sort of balanced out. And now I'm going to bring an end to this episode. Hope that explanation of vassal states and what I could have done and the consequences thereof was of some value. Um, 
when we we're next when we next continue next video uh i'm gonna get on the business of properly consolidating and moving some forces we're gonna go up to tech tree i'm gonna set up this damn corporation and we're gonna have ourselves a good time i'll talk to you later